Um, hello, so today we are going to continue on problems from weekly contest 405. The third problem is count submatrices with equal frequency of x and y. Um, so basically we have a matrix that contains only one of three characters, x, y, and um, x, y, and dot. Okay, And we want to return the number of submatrices that contain um, the first cell so definitely needs to start from the first cell all of them need to start from the first cell um, and the number of x values and y values or x cells and y cells need to be equal and we need to have at least one x so you can't have both absent equal to zero you have to have at least one x which means you have to have one y as well so if we take a look at this first example here um, what are the submatrices that have this? Um, well, we, we have this one has one X and one Y, so they are equal. We have this one, same thing. Um, this one here is not valid because it has two Y's and one X. So, so far we have two. But if you look here, this has a dot, but it has, we can, we can have a dot. But it has one x, one y, um, so the two, all the conditions are valid. So now we have three. Um, and other than that, there is nothing else, right? If we take the entire thing, um, then we would have two y's. So we can't do that. So the result should be three. So that's the idea. Now, looking at the constraint again, not too big, one thousand. So we could probably just do a loop um, and just find the values. But if we do a loop where we start from each position, from this position, and each time try horizontal, try vertical, and try a square. If we do that, then um, we, we shouldn't be recalculating each time the number of x and y, because that would be very expensive, right? We would have a you know, of rows by columns, just for traversal, um, and then we or froze by column twice because we would have to find this end point and the, the end end point. Um, or we could just have all froze by columns for the end point here. For the, since we know the starting point, we, we need to find the end point. But, um, so that would be rows by columns. So that would be with this 1000, that would be 10 to the power of 6. But if inside that loop we'd have to recalculate to find how many x and y, then that would be another um, at least 10 to the power of 6. So that would be too big. So we can't do that. Um, so what's the next best thing? Well, this is the same thing as if you had, um, if you had an array, right? If you had an array and you wanted to know how many x and why you have in that at each position, right? What would you do? Well, you would just at this position, for example, you would check at position i minus one how many x's and how many y's, right? So you just have two prefixes, one prefix for x values that will tell you that at position one you have two x's, and then another one for y that will tell you at position one you have zero y. So you can just keep track, and then when you get to here and find that it's a y, you will increment. You'll say now that your py2 is equal to 1, and your py2 is equal to 2. Your px of 2 is equal to 2, because it's just px of i minus 1 plus um, 1 if the current value is x, or 0 if it's not, right? So by the same logic, we can apply the same logic to the matrix, except the main thing to know when you are calculating a prefix for um, a matrix like this, it's going to be, if you look at it here, what's the prefix sum maybe for this value here? Well, it's going to be this plus this. But if you look at what we did here, we counted this portion twice, and so you need to subtract it. Now, let me re re reiterate. You, you want to calculate this entire prefix sum. How do you know it? Well. It's going to be this portion. Now, what is this portion? This portion here is just, let's say, this entire thing ends here at i and j. Well, this is just the previous column 
but the same row is still there. So this is i j minus 1. Plus this portion here. Now what is this portion? This is the same j but the previous i, the previous row. So this is i minus 1 j. Okay? But look at this portion here. We calculated this portion twice. Now what is this portion? This portion is i minus 1 is the previous row, the previous column. So it's i minus 1, j minus 1. So we need to subtract it because we added it twice. Now, I, I recommend you draw a big rectangle so that you can see it's not just the position 0, 0. It's actually the entire um, rectang uh, rectangle covering the previous, starting from the previous row in the previous column. Okay. So overall, it's just the prefix sum for i, j minus 1, plus i minus 1, j minus the prefix sum for i minus 1, j minus 1. Okay, so for example, for uh, x, for i minus 1, for i and j, it's exactly the formula that we just saw in the drawing there, i minus 1, j minus 1. Um, sorry, um, the previous, so this would be i minus 1, j. This would be the previous row, the same column, so this is this one, plus the same row, previous column, so that would be this one, okay, but then we need to remove the portion that we just considered twice, which is the previous row, the previous column, because this one here is included in this one and in this one, so we added it twice, so we need to subtract it, it once, but we also remember with this, we calculated this portion, with this portion, but we didn't account for the new cell. So we need to account for the new cell because what if this the value here was x, right? Um, so we need to check if the value is x, we add 1. So if the value, um, let's call this grid A just to simplify. If the value is x, then we add 1. Otherwise, it should be we add nothing. And the same formula applies to y, except for y, we are looking for um, for values equal to y. So like this, and we need to check this is equal to y, right? So this is the formula we can use for the prefix sum for um, for a, 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 a submatrix. Uh, but we need for a matrix. But we need to find. Um, um, so what can we do? We, we need to uh, we need to check the conditions, and then just count once we have these prefix sums, these conditions, right? And just count the submatrices that have all of these conditions. Um, now one thing is this i minus one and this j minus one means if you start from zero, you would have minus one, which is not what we want. So to avoid that, usually what you should do is just you have the number of rows and the number of columns, just make these prefix sums the length be rows plus 1 and columns plus 1. So it would be columns plus 1 by rows plus 1 cells. Just so that basically the, the last value is actually rows, columns. So that for the per first position where we are starting at value 1, um, this is this is a valid value one minus one, which is zero. Okay, this is just a trick you can use if you want. You can still do the if condition. Check if i equal to basically do for i equal to zero. Do a separate calculation where you just check the value. Um, you could also do that, but I, I prefer this method because it's um, it's shorter to write. Um, okay, so now let's do that. Let's write our um, so first we need just a couple of values, rows and columns, the length. Um, so this would be A, this would be A, and the count. Then we need to calculate the prefix sum for the x values and for the y values. Now the prefix sum for x values, we just apply this formula, but we do the loop, as I said, on, um, on rows and columns, right? Um, and then for the uh, py values, we do the same thing. Um, now, we could actually make this just basically looking for the character, just so that it's easier to write. Um, we just need one function, so the prefix sum we calculated for each. Okay, and now this here, uh, 
sorry about that. And now this here just needs to look for x. So this is a, and this needs to look for y. Okay. Um, and then uh, from there we can just do our calculation. So we just do a loop similar to this here, um, and just look for the conditions that we have. And the conditions are for this one. That's what we did because we are calculating only the prefixes, which start from zero zero. So this one is already considered. But we need to look at these two, which say. Um, we need an equal frequency and at least one x. So to check for equal frequency, we just need the px of i and j to be equal to the same for the values of y. So py of i and j. And we need to have at least one x, which means, let's do that in the front, which means this value here needs to be bigger than zero in that, in that submatrix. If that's the case, then we can increment the count of, um, because that means this is submatrix we want to count. Um, and then at the end, we just return the overall count. Okay, and we can run this. Um, looks good, let's submit. Now, in terms of time complexity here, you can see we have these two um, each one of them, these two prefix calculations, each one of them is rows by columns. So this one is O of row by column, this is O of the number of rows by the number of columns. Same thing for here. So overall the time complexity is um, O of rows by columns. Now space complexity is, if this was maybe N and columns is M, this would be O of N M. And space complexity, again, we are using these two prefix uh, submatrices or matrices where um, each one of them is also rows by columns, so O of an M as well. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Um, it's a direct application of prefix sums for a matrix. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.